Hello, when you were listening to Feed Your Mind. So over a half a year ago, I released which might be the only flat earth video that discusses how signals are bounced off the dome. I mean, no matter what type of science book you break out and no matter what type of math you tell me and no matter what type of equations you put together, you're not going to convince me that you're bouncing signals off of the sky. I mean, just being logical, you know the air is not something you can touch. So it really didn't take much for me to figure out that they're bouncing signals off of the dome firmament and not the sky. So I released a video about the White Alice Project. And then I ended up making a part two, which was a follow-up video with my commentary. And I went to detail and described why I believe that satellites are bouncing signals off of a glass dome firmament. And so then I moved on to other subjects on the flat earth and discussed Antarctica and outer space and the ISS, the Challenger explosion, the fake Earth pictures. And so it's been a long time since I released those two videos. It's been about a year now, almost. And I'm minding my business and doing some work and listening to some podcasts. And then this alleged whistleblower began to speak about satellites and how they bounce signals off the dome. And so when I heard this information, this whistleblower was discussing how he used to work on satellites and ended up moving up in the satellite industry, creating satellites. He was basically the guy in charge of the satellites and was working real close with the government, working real close with powerful companies, putting satellites up in the sky. And he was doing a lot of work with the solar tech to make sure the satellite stays powered up. And eventually he got so high into a position that we got to a point in the business to where he got approached. And the guy is pretty clear that he got approached by the Illuminati and the Illuminati was letting him know that, okay, you've reached a certain level. And so now he was on a need to know area in the satellite business. And like I said, with Flat Earth, not everybody needs to know to hide it. It's only the certain people at the very, very top that need to know. And so this guy apparently reached that position. And he was approached by the Illuminati. And they told him that you need to do this and this and this for the satellite to work because there is no satellites. And he was at a point now where they had to explain to him what he has to do and why he has to do it. And they pretty much threatened his life. And then so he did what they said. And so it turns out this guy ended up telling close friends that also work in the government about the top secret satellite information. And this got him in big trouble. And so now he's on the run and he's releasing information. He claims he's going to be releasing stuff to WikiLeaks. It sounds like even WikiLeaks is kind of concerned about releasing the information. The information is very big. It's about how satellites don't really exist. And so apparently this guy is becoming like an Assange type guy for satellites where he's releasing information while he's on the run. And so is this story true? You know, I can't really confirm or deny if this is actual authentic audio. But the thing is, when I looked into the information, a lot of stuff started coming to light. Because before this information, all I heard about Project Fishbowl was that they're mapping the dome firmament. Well, when I went back and did my research on Project Fishbowl, communication tech was actually a very large part of why they were launching Operation Fishbowl. And they were blasting EMP type blast against the dome and they were getting charges. And according to this whistleblower, the charges can last years. It all has to do with the signal control and how satellite tech works. And so when I launched the first White Alice story, I was like the first flat earther and probably the only flat earther that brought to you the satellite signal those being bounced off the dome hypothesis and then when i released the project fishbowl video it seems like i'm the first flat earther to ever discuss how project fishbowl was all about satellite tech as well as mapping the dome firmament and so this will be part three of the fishbowl series and i will play this audio of this alleged whistleblower whose information matches up because i might not have realized that the communication tech was a big part of fishbowl if i hadn't heard this audio so this audio that you're hearing is from a whistleblower who seems to be running for his life from the Illuminati because they want to kill him because he's leaking out information about satellite tech and how it bounces signals off of a glass dome structure, which NASA has been telling everybody is outer space. But apparently that blue sky that you see every morning and that night starry sky that you see at night is a glass dome firmament. And without it, satellite technology would not be possible. 
And so I begin describing what they're doing, basically, is using the dome firmament as a giant satellite dish. And so whether this whistleblower is authentic or not, the information added up when I looked into it. And so I suspect that this whistleblower is actually the real deal. And even if he's not, the information led me to more discoveries about the dome firmament and how they use it with the satellite tech. So I'm going to play the audio. You can judge for yourself whether you want to believe it or not, but the information is incredible. And it goes into detail about how satellites bounce signals off the dome firmament. And I did some edits to the video to make it run a little bit quicker. And so let's play the clip. I am a whistleblower who worked as a power supply engineer for two of the major companies that claim to manufacture satellites. I have to hide the identity of my voice for protection, but I am real. For 15 years, I was convinced that I actually designed electronics packages, what we call black boxes that are on board satellites. I designed the Mark 271 power converter to convert the solar panel power and regulate it so that it can be used to power the electronics packages aboard the GPS Phase 5 satellites. I also was told I was designing power converters for the Motorola Iridium Class 9A satellites. Then in 2006 I worked for a company in Las Vegas, designing the electronics for the upgraded military smart bombs called JDAM that are guided by GPS. You can Google that if you want to know more. I began to suspect there was something fishy about every company I worked for when on September 17th of 2007 I was pulled aside by an engineer that worked for the Air Force and was the engineering supervisor for the contract. He kept talking about the all-seeing eye and even asked me if I had considered joining the Freemasons and socializing with he and others like Trump. I told him I wasn't into that sort of club because they were just old men. My head began to spin and I didn't know what to say because I thought we were talking about designing GPS modules. He then slapped a $1 bill down on the table and pointed to that pyramid with a floating eye above it that I didn't understand and said see, that is the ever-seeing eye. You had better learn who you work for, and he left. All of a sudden the smile was gone and he leaned forward and looked into my eyes and said you have the highest compartmentalized clearance on this project and if one word of what we talked about gets to anybody, you will be tried for treason and that carries the death penalty. Then he whispered something that caused chills to run up my spine. That is if you live long enough to go to jail. Accidents do happen you know. My head was spinning, I didn't know what was real. I guess he saw my concern and he said you will soon understand. He got up and left the billions appropriated for an expensive program like GPS goes a long way in perpetuating the biggest hoax ever pulled on the entire world by those in power. That was a long time ago to me and I've lived the lie ever since with every project I've worked on, including going through all the trouble to build power supplies for satellites that don't even exist. I don't know if the earth is flat, square, or shaped like a banana. What I do know is that finding out GPS doesn't come from satellites and that there are really no satellites and exposing that could get me killed. After living this lie for many years and having to tell our contractors the lie to keep the engineers in the dark, I want this story to be public in case something happens to me. I am guessing that if I can't get to another country that I'm a dead man. When the space cover-up is threatened, all stops are pulled to prevent it from leaking since it is the biggest lie the government has. There are all sorts of explanations about satellites, some people might suggest they are actually balloons similar to weather balloons, or aircraft, while some say they even exist and float around above the earth. Still others claim they do not exist at all and we really get all of our satellite signals from the ground. Satellite uplink and downlink dishes are real. The uplink beams a signal toward the sky and the downlink receives a signal and that signal actually comes from the sky and not the ground. Any electronic technician can tell you why a dish would have to pick up a signal from the sky, due to the way they are made, and they have to be aligned to an exact location in the sky. So, if there are no satellites, where does the signal come from? A balloon? Everybody by now should know that balloons are pushed by the winds. Satellite antennas that are used for geostationary satellites do not move. Can you imagine what a nightmare it would be to make the illusion of satellites by putting up balloon after balloon to keep at least one in front of all of the satellite dishes? Since there are supposedly a lot of satellites in geostationary orbit, the nightmare would be even worse. Another problem is that balloons big enough to carry a transponder would be like large weather balloons which can often be seen from the ground, especially when the sun is at a low angle in the sky and lights it up. All of these balloons would be seen by someone and they would also have to come down somewhere. No, satellites are not balloons, nor are they aircraft. 
satellites are also not floating around over the flat plane, it is really quite simple, engineers have been able to take advantage of some very unique properties of the dome which covers the earth, transparent aluminum only exists in theory, but it is said to have unique properties, one of those properties was changing the incident angle of an electromagnetic wave from a normal reflected signal, without getting technical, I will try to describe what I mean. When you shine a light on a window or shiny surface, the light reflects at the same angle that it arrives. In other words, a mirror placed at a 45 degree angle will bounce light in a manner that it will turn a 90 degree corner. Back during the late 50s and early 60s, scientists were probing the dome with stronger and shorter wavelength radio signals. When their technology improved they found a strange phenomenon. When a radio signal hit the dome, it did not reflect off at the same incidence angle. The radio signal somehow excited the molecules in the dome in such a way that it appeared to retransmit the signal back at the same angle of the radio wave from the ground. This was a revolution for two different groups of people and those at the top had a brainstorm. They had just discovered a way to simulate satellites to keep their illusion going in the face of better technology, plus, this could actually be used to communicate very wide band signals over far areas across the earth. In order to understand why this is important, you have to know a bit about radio and communications. Radio signals are based on frequency, or cycles per second which is called hertz. Radio signals on low frequencies such as AM broadcast can bounce through the ionosphere, but this is not reliable and changes during the time of day. Another big problem is that the lower the frequency the less bandwidth it can carry. Digital video signals require a lot more bandwidth. The higher the frequency that is used for communication, the more bandwidth you can use. But, when you get up to microwave signals which are billions of cycles per second the signal will only go in a straight line and will not bounce off of the upper atmosphere. Let's go back and look at the dome. Because of the unique properties of what we engineers call, coherent reflection, satellite dishes can uplink a signal to the dome and it will reflect back down along the same path but a secondary signal also bounces off at the same incident angle. This allows bouncing it so that it can be picked up not only locally, but in other countries. But, there was a huge problem. Although radio signals were bouncing off of the dome, they were very weak due to the distances involved. I will provide you the exact dimensions of the dome in a later video. It is well understood and has been probed and measured. Another characteristic that was shown in the transparent aluminum model was related to its electrical charge and its excitability to enhance radio signals that it reflects by resonant molecular motion. If only a way to add a small electrical charge to the dome could be figured out, but this was obviously beyond their capabilities. At least until hydrogen bomb tests in the 50s proved that strong electromagnetic signals called EMP pulses are created with bursts at high altitudes. Secret discussions between the United States and the Soviet Union were held after the scientists determined that with a specified number of upper atmospheric air bursts were planned. To this day, I do not know the exact number. The Soviets and Americans set off several at different locations to make this work. These started in 1958 and the first commercial use of a fake satellite by private industry occurred when Echo 1 was supposedly launched in 1960. After the final charging bursts were fired in 1963 the second fake echo was launched. While an uplink downlink were provided for international live television signals between Europe and the United States. The atomic tests worked exactly as the engineers predicted, but there is a problem that has started. Although the charge lasts for years, even decades, it is beginning to drop. The physics of the way the charge works is not linear, so as it drops the reflected signals do not drop, until this charge gets below a certain level. Since atomic tests have been supposedly banned, scientists had to come up with another reason to set off a few atomic booster bursts to keep the charge above this threshold, they had to figure out another way to explain to people why they were setting off atomic bombs in the sky. Along came a new idea, what if the Earth was threatened by something and what better thing than an asteroid? Of course, both Russia and the United States could design and implement nuclear-tipped rockets to either destroy and nudge a large asteroid over. All of a sudden there are asteroids passing between us and the moon making near misses. This is a planned programming of the population, so that when the time comes to set off a few more atomic bombs that can be seen from the ground, there will be no question what they are used for. Just like the global illusion, we have come a long way since the first television broadcast that supposedly used the Echo satellite which was a large inflatable balloon covered with mylar and flashed aluminum. 
Once they discovered the dome could be used for radio communications there was a need for more channels and thus more satellites. This is where a big problem for engineers occurred. When the signal hit the dome and reflected it spread out and it was impossible to reflect different signals within a few degrees of each other off of the dome. Engineers who had developed radars for the Navy and military had used a system called phased array antennas at microwave frequencies to scan very narrow beam radar signals up and down.